Hello and welcome to this tutorial. In this session, we will see how to create log functionality in Oracle PLSQL. So there are several ways to log information in PLSQL and the most used approaches are to log information directly to a file on the OS level at Oracle server side using, for example, UTL file package or to insert the data directly into a table. Writing the information to a file on the OS level has some drawbacks. You should have access to the server to access the file. Concurrent login is not easy to achieve because you have only one file and accessing the file is not easy. You need to parse the file and to get the most important information. However, the second approach is to write the log information into a table. This has many advantages. For example, a log is accessible from everywhere. You can access the database. You can access the data using SQL, which is very helpful. Concurrency and consistency of the data is assured by Oracle engine, unlike the approach using a file on the OS level. However, login functionality should be lightweight and shouldn't clutter the business logic. So there are some requirements on a login functionality. For example, it should be fast. If for some reason the login function fails, this shouldn't have impacts on the main work and it should have its own transaction. Oracle provides mechanism to achieve all these requirements. So let's see how can we implement login function in PLSQL. For our demo, we will use a 12C or Oracle database and we will create an anonymous PLSQL block. So it is the same if you are using function packages. For sake of simplicity, use PLSQL anonymous block. And we will implement this procedure. Let's name it PC log and it accepts one parameter bar car. So call it inside the main, the main block. So this is the procedure. And as we said at the beginning, this procedure shouldn't affect the main work here. So if for some reason an error triggered here, it shouldn't propage to the outside block. And therefore we have to define an own exception block. This log should write the result in a table and therefore we have to create a table. So let's create a new table. We could also use CELOB instead of varcar, but uh, we keep it simple. So let's create the table. And to fill the ID in the log table, we will create also a sequence for that. So sequence has been created. And now we have only to implement. We will use dynamic SQL to write an insert statement and bind variable. Will be only one hard parse for this statement and it will not clutter our database shared pool. Using, however, we said that this procedure should have its own transaction and Oracle provided a way to achieve that. That tells the compiler that should be run in its own transaction. So this is the most important things when you implement a log function, you should define it in its own transaction. We can test that now. So for example, if I run this and you see successfully run, so let's check the table. Uh, we forgot and commit. Yeah, you need to commit the change. And we see here, so the information are writing to this uh, table. Let's check whether this procedure will be run its in own transaction. And for that, we will just create another table. We create another table and let's say insert into test table. And after that, I will roll back. I will not commit this change. And let's see what's happened. We run. You see, we have a new entry in this table. And let's see the contents of this table. It should be empty, indeed. So this is a way how to implement a log function in Oracle. So the most important things, it should have its own transaction. 
And this is achieved by using Pragma Autonomous transaction. And second thing, it should have its own exception handling. So any error here will not propagate to the outside world. So I hope this was helpful for you. Thank you for watching and bye.